One, our ancestors and the Amazon rainforest practiced and still today present us lifestyle, solutions, action plan for quality of life and existence to keep us away from an actually almost exponentially growing number of diseases, epidemics, calamities, collapse of life expectancy and possible irreversible extinctions. Just as has already been proven to be the case with all other human populations that are now extinct such as the Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo erectus, etc., hence we call all. These other humans archaic. But there is nothing that makes us different from the ones that have already gone extinct for ten thousands of years. If there was, you would have heard about it, or the ones that are extinct would not be even called sister groups anymore as they are now called. After all, all these groups have the same DNA and kind of are the same human, but different parts are switched off or switched on. As David Reich claims, this is considered weird and obviously very disturbing for consensus, and it should be. All this could feel a little bit awkward for some, but you can check it out, because it is correct, and it seems close to what David Reich claims or hints at all along. Alternatively scientists will not call Homo erectus a sister group of us, simply because no DNA was recognized to represent and classify them genetically as a sister group. If there really was one essential difference between us and Neanderthals and Denisovan, we should not call them sister groups. Genetics prove us that Neanderthals and Denisovans are identical to us. Nevertheless we call them sister groups of us, whose version once just like us emerged as or after turnover by hybrids or variations of what already existed. Not even our scientists know who got DNA from who, who is archaic and who is modern. If we recognize the Amazon Amerindian or even the Amerindian as our and our sister group's ancestors we know who is not modern, non-hybrid or before hybridization, and who is modern, hybrid or before hybridization. Scientists consent that we, 8 billion modern humans, are hybrids, and that is very clever because it shuts off many paradigms, but they call us hybrids for another reason and with another explanation of it, that as David Reich puts it diplomatically, has very low probability, kind of cannot be true or important. Consensus and science, even David Reich still does, claim that certain Europeans have 2% of Neanderthal DNA, but scientifically that is speculation. If David Reich would make clear what he silently claims he would damage his and many others' careers and some of the most important research and he never ever will do that. If there was a critical mass of those that voiced their opinion that would give him space, he would probably take that space and become more clear. Obviously something that is now openly and systematically claimed complex would become clear and simple, meaning who we are and where we come from. Next we have a chance to know our ancestors' lifestyle problems and solutions and why they were turned over or off the radar. For us and our new hypothesis it is clear, the ancestors of Homo erectus, Denisovan, Neanderthal and ultimately ourselves, 8 billion Homo sapiens or modern humans, are descendants of the Amerindian and more specifically of the Amazon Amerindian. Our ancestor is neither black nor white, it simply has the original skin color which most probably still runs amongst the Amazon Amerindians. We modern humans are merely the youngest and the last of these hybrid sister groups or descendants, and once more under threat of extinction, but this time we are under more complex threat of extinction, most of the threats are recognized by our health organizations, hence our threats are sometimes also called a perfect storm. This so-called perfect storm, as well as the in or before 2017 by Kent Thornborg predicted collapse of life expectancy are the subject of other videos of our channels. 2. Scientific ancestral markers from around the world consistently point out of the Americas, and consequently to Amerindians, possibly exactly like those that still exist in the Amazon forest, as our ancestors. We claim that these ancestor Amerindians, of which probably some still are alive in the Amazon forest probably amongst a majority of slightly hybridized ancestors, also are the ancestors of our now extinct and thus archaic sister groups Denisovans and Neanderthals. 3. Scientists recognize that Amazon Dark Earth sequesters carbon and is the cause of unique and long-term organic soil fertility, without fertilizers, that also sequesters carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So Amazon Dark Earth solves at least two of our threats simultaneously. Image above right. A fleet of boats, in white, by the presentation of only the hulls of the boats, without crew and without sail, but with bows in front and in the back. Some interpret this stone depiction as a flock of birds, but when interpreted in other contexts they are hulls with a bow in front and in the back. As one can see in the video huge ancient sailing ships from Bronze Age Scandinavia, many of the boats present a bow in the front and one in the back, this could be functional, aesthetic or to impress. Possibly the artist liked the duality with the flock of birds or maybe the authors did not like others to recognize right away it is about a fleet of boats. 
Image below left, a boat disassembled in its elements, hull with bows, cross-mast, without sail, B, sail, square below. But at the same whaling scene with two crude boats on both sides of a whale, just the typical whale tail above the water, A. Image below right, with the tools or axes to kill or to process, D. 4. We spent some time explaining the scenery on some of the steely, megalith stones or standing stones, to not only illustrate that whaling and processing was the case, but that it was essential for modern humans to populate the planet and also huge. They probably hunted in fleets to hunt one or more flocks and possibly hunted down hundreds of whales in one hunt. Next they would need to tow the whales to process on land, as they probably could not process safely while still on the sea. We show a photo of whale processing of the former century. Only a few carcasses are in view, but they are huge as they can weigh up to 70 tons each. You could think that it would be enough for an army, and that is exactly what it was. It was for the army or for some of the ones that provide food for the people, warriors, that turn over some area that is continent scale. The rows of standing stones probably had a role in the organizing and processing of tens or hundreds of whale bodies that came in after one hunt. 5. Such Ocean Jayaport K continent combinations, Karnak is one of many, connected to inland and continent through at least one navigable river, Garon, and to at least one region with resources, Pyrenees, and or to at least one other water body, Mediterranean, Marseille, Rhone, Switzerland, Luxembourg, Belgium, Ardennes, could make or break the turnover of a continent-scaled part of the word as certainly was the case with YHPR, which includes the North Atlantic Gyre, and YHPC, which includes the extended Austronesian expansion. 6. What some understandably interpret as regions in a multi-regionality thesis, for instance in Africa, to handle certain important paradigms, are in fact the ports and caves of at least two ocean sea gyes. 7. Hybrid Neanderthals as well as other hybrids before them were the working class or caste of the then actual hybrid humans, those replacing the former population. This is an example of the pattern that takes place over and over. The dominant class at the time hybridizes themselves or for DNA stability reasons their ancestor, which initially is the Amazon Amerind. So at the time Neanderthals appeared, the then dominant modern humans, most probably already hybrids themselves, hybridized and multiplied the Neanderthals in cradles most probably still in the Americas. Next these new hybrids were systematically transported across one of the gyres to one of the ocean gyreport caves. In the case of the Neanderthals Karnak was one of them. During the roughly 40 days of crossing the Neanderthals also would be intensively involved in whale hunting. Once on the new continent, the Neanderthals would be involved in mammoth, megafauna or other animal hunting, with most of the time disposing of mainly stone tools while their creators and owners most probably has more sophisticated weapons and jewelry. 8. Image. Our ancestors out of the Americas preferred the Atlantic routes, but did not avoid any of the regions of this planet and systematically hunted mammoths on land, on islands as on Arctic ice, but they also hunted right whales and sperm whales across all the oceans. The used techniques, weapons, tools for mining and boats to navigate were universal, global, including the sun and star constellation navigation and the use symbols to illustrate them were universal. 9. We rarely find preserved bodies or even bones of our ancestors, an important factor for consensus not willing to be able to recognize them, because our ancestors, still, had a recycling view and systematically burned their death, cremation to ashes stored in urns in the deep dark soils, and even houses, all adding up to fertile and higher typical mounds. 10. Burials in boats are exceptional and limited to regions with permafrost and lack of enough fuel, but when found are quite impressive and quite symbolic. 11. Image. Ship or boat with paddling crew and or sails hunting Atlantic right whale, also sperm whales. The tiny series of vertical lines above the whale are the crew of a boat, recurrent form of depiction of the boat crew including the whale hunting crews which clearly is essential for them to close the double direction circle around the globe. Possibly the whale is already ripped open to illustrate at least part of the processing, possibly to control bloating. Sequestered carbon simply is life, whether it are plants, animals, or humans, or preserved dead life forms. 12. Archaeological facts etc. point to roots parting from the Americas and encircling the whole planet globe, this by means of highly productive ocean gyes currents voyages that go from one transoceanic cradle to the opposite transoceanic cradle, and which together with transcontinental routes connects all cradles and cultures of the whole world all the time, in the past. 13. The encircling routes are composed of ports with caves on both sides of gyes and oceans and are completed with routes across the continents, kind of silk roads. 
Therefore essential cradles, as the real ancestor, are wrongly interpreted by consensus, which does not recognize the importance of transcontinental navigation as multiregionalism, which offends what the scientific markers tell us and cause paradigms, signals that consensus's core hypotheses, which are not proven by markers, are not significant enough to rule out others' hypotheses, like the here presented new hypothesis, which are systematically proven by all scientific markers. 14. Typical Amerindian domesticated crops, statues with their hands on navel, genitals, bellies, artifacts, and necklaces, often with wild animal tooths as is common with the Amerindians, together with persistent myths, ziggurats, or pyramids, no aliens needed to explain, encircle the whole planet because of the oceanic and continental routes around the globe. We should keep in mind that cultures and religions systematically destroyed evidence of this Amerindian and global culture, a real one culture, one health, etc. 15. Gem artifacts, their composition and their rhetoric elements symbolism are systematic and encircle the whole planet and consequently prove the existence and functionality of the above-mentioned global root system. 16. Haplogroups like the enigmatic mtDNA L better known as mitochondrial of African Eve, YHP haplogroups like the dominant Q, C and R circle the planet and or appear over the planet without the Beringia bridge being able to explain this pattern nor its gaps, this while the here proposed and illustrated transoceanic cradles clearly explain. In this series and channel we not only will illustrate what we claim, but we will also prove all claims with scientific ancestral markers and migrational markers, including by the by consensus recognized haplogroups and haplotypes. Thank you.